Hello everybody. Hey. I'm at North Spore and I'm here learning about mushrooms. I'm with Alaya here, who's one of the co-founders, and uh, we'll sit down and kind of chat about mushrooms a little bit. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, North Spore is a mushroom company up here in Portland, Maine, and they make really high quality kits, spawn. Um, you guys have what, gotten into selling cultures? And yeah, we have. We've even started with liquid cultures now, uh, and a lot of cultures, a lot of different grits, stuff. You don't just have like standard yeah. oysters. You have yeah. like yeah. you've got morels and all sorts of interesting things totally. that people like a yeah. plastic eating fungus yeah. that you I can think kind of experiment we're with. We're even starting to do some kind of like custom cultures and stuff like that too. That's that's really cool. Um, so you know, it's not easy necessarily to like run a mushroom business. There's a lot of logistics. There's a lot of um, kind of unknowns, I guess, and like being part of a, a mushroom company, but like what are some of the things that kind of inspired you guys to like get into this and you know, was it just for the love of mushrooms or? It, yeah, it was really about the love of mushrooms and kind of working together and like figuring out mushroom growing and just, you know, the challenge yeah. of uh, just kind of keeping and pushing our innovation and mm, like growing finding techniques. new strands yeah, to grow yeah. and like trying to and make even sure just improving our own techniques yeah you know, it's like if anything you work at and are diligent at it's like you're improving all the time learning yeah. more so i mean um, it's like you know your basic process i guess in putting together one of these mushroom blocks is you take a mixture of substrate and yeah. so when we say substrate we're talking about anything from sawdust to grain to straw it's some sort yeah. of organic plant matter you mix it up so it's homogenized. You're yep. usually doing a mixture of different types of yeah, stuff, too, yeah. right? And we're hydrating. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So hydration, right? That's yeah. a big part of it. Yeah. So you guys mix it, hydrate it, and then you have to sterilize it. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're getting it to a very specific uh, moisture content, and then we're bagging it, and then we're sterilizing it. Um, and how do you sterilize you guys? You uh, we sterilize it to either steaming at uh, like zero atmospheres of pressure, depending on what it is, what the substrate is, mm -hmm. or we're autoclaving it okay. at high pressure, high okay. temperature. Um, so and that's that's to essentially take all the spores that are in that substrate exactly. and try to make them non-viable. You're trying to yeah. heat treat them basically till they kind of give up the ghost and they're not going to like interfere with the mushroom I said they're trying to put in there. Exactly. So that way you don't get little bits of contamination and green stuff and orange things. Right. You, know, you have nice white You're growing what you want to be growing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and mushrooms need that because they're competitive, but like if you want to make sure that you have like quality mushrooms that you know you can eat safely, you want to make sure it's exactly what you yeah, want to put in that kind of thing. So, so that's a process and like each mushroom probably has a slightly different substrate mix. It right? does, yeah. And yeah, so each species has a slightly different substrate mix and then we have many different processes for depending on both the substrate mix mm -hmm. and the species. So, uh, you know, different autoclave cycles, mm -hmm. different steam run mm -hmm. cycles, different moisture contents. And so, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that as a mushroom company, you know, this isn't just you guys cultivating mushrooms in your backyard. This is like, you've spent many years dialing in and optimizing, like, what is the best substrate mixture for this oyster mushroom yeah. versus that oyster yeah. mushroom? Um, you know, exactly what hydration yeah. level do you need? What are the autoclave cycles that make sure that you get fully sterilized with this substrate right. mixture? Um, and that way, when you ship kits out to people, you're not getting a lot of people saying, ah, my kit didn't work, exactly. or there's orange stuff growing, what do I do? Um, and that's why, I mean, this is, you know, the processing of substrate and inoculating it, but the more that we've grown and developed our techniques, the more I always think, like, outdoor growing, for mm -hmm. example, it's like how intensive it is to do indoor growing just to try to replicate like what's already just available outside, right, you know, right, it's like yeah, yeah. you can just like inoculate some logs, put them outside, basically do nothing and they grow and well, they grow. or you need to have like super specific grow rooms, really dial in the parameters, do right. things like try as hard as you can and still maybe not even be like the same, you know, hopefully yeah. you can do a little better, yeah. but it's a lot more work it to is. just basically get it to is. that same place as very much.
But that being said, once you get the indoor stuff figured out, you usually have a higher rate of like getting good yeah. quality yeah, mushrooms it's every very time. Consistent. You're not yeah. getting issues with bugs getting in there, or like I know all the time when I grow mushrooms in my backyard, I yeah. come out and I'm like, well, that's a good looking yeah. mushroom. I'm gonna harvest that this, yeah. you know, tomorrow morning. I come out, it got eaten by slugs. Yeah. And I'm like, there's there's like a little bit of mushroom left, but it's it's the slugs just came and took it all over. Totally. So there's you know you gain a level of control yeah. by being inside, but you also need to exert a level yeah. of control and process to like understand yeah. exactly how something's going to grow and it, that's yeah. that's a big challenge for mushroom farms definitely and you guys started out i think growing yeah, mushrooms we do. commercially we do. sell but then have kind of moved to a model where you're like supplying exactly. that stuff for other people yeah. um is that and is it just because growing mushrooms is too much work is it is it not consistent enough is it just that this is kind of what you guys wanted to focus on it's kind of, we just really wanted to focus on supporting other people and okay. growing mushrooms and it felt like the best way to kind of have a broad reach like we weren't really i like the idea of kind of more localized food and mm -hmm. you know being more like a seed company and a growing supply company we can enable people all over the country and all over the world to be growing food for their uh, local communities yeah. where if we were just a massive mushroom farm we'd be shipping where you're shipping they mushrooms be, and they wouldn't it wouldn't get it's a fresh, fresh exactly. exactly. It's so. oyster mushrooms in particular. Like we have a pink oyster, a blue oyster, and this is like a yeah. Belvana or white or some oyster mushrooms in particular. Like amazing, see them grow. They're so fresh. Yeah. They're vibrant. They smell great, and I can feel you know each one of them is kind of cool because they're a little bit yeah. wet. But like if you harvest these, yeah. they're gonna turn dry really quickly. Yeah, and especially like, when you're shipping. Yeah, them. in like yeah. a day they'll get brown on the edge, and they just don't. They don't have a super yeah. long shelf life. And that these are fundamentally different yeah. than the agaricus by spores you buy in the grocery store which you find for like a week or two in the fridge. And so instead of trying to sell oyster mushrooms, it makes more sense to be like, here, I'm going to sell you a kit, you grow your own, and you harvest right. it exactly. Exactly. You and, you know, like this cluster of uh, oyster mushrooms, if we, you know, we're, for example, harvesting it and sending it to California, like we don't do a food subscription model, but right. if we were, like, you know, inevitably, even if we ship them really well, like they're going to be somewhat dried out and probably cracked mm -hmm. and not as nice. But if we ship this block to California and somebody grows it at home, they can still have absolutely perfect, perfect fresh mushrooms, mushrooms yeah. at home. Yeah. So that's cool. And then you guys have focused not just on these like, you know, good edible mushrooms, but you have some kind of cool what are considered like medicinal mushrooms, yeah. so like reishi mushrooms like this. Um, this is a really cool, it's a Ganoderma species, uh, and normally they're like white rot fungi that grow on trees. Uh, but this is one that instead of forming like a big shelf or a conch, it actually forms antlers. Yeah. Is, this a, is it a special species? That's, is it a special yeah, that's variety? Ganoderma lucidum. Lucidum, okay. Um, but I also think it's the way, it's both the species, but the way it's grown. Mm. And it kind of grows. Was this grown with a collar around uh, it? It was portion? actually grown in the bag. In the, okay, so it had this bag, high CO. Yeah. It's, this is like the easiest one to grow. You right. literally don't even have to take it out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so you can forget Just, about it and yeah, come back. It. And it's like I think, perfect. I think I did that once. Yeah. The one time I grew Ganoderma, I forgot to like yeah. open the bag, yeah. and I came back a few weeks later. And I was like, oh, it's just yeah. doing its own you thing. You don't it's add water, don't cut the bag, don't do anything. You just this come just, back you know, grow your own mushroom. People always ask me, too, is like, can I keep mushrooms as pets? And I was like, well, you can't really go to the woods and, like, take a mushroom in a little piece of soil and bring it home. It just doesn't work yeah. like that. I got mycelium and other stuff. But you can do this because, yeah. like, an oyster mushroom is functionally only going to grow for maybe three or four days at most before you want to harvest it. This thing, though, will grow for what? Months? Yeah, potentially. Totally. Even yeah. you have to do basically nothing to it. So this is like keeping a mushroom pet. And then when it dries out, well, you can make tincture out of it. You can grind it up and put it into, you know, coffee, chocolate, whatever yeah. nutritional thing you want to put it in. Or you keep your own as decoration. It just makes a nice little, like, piece to have in your office. I like, I really like cutting it up and uh, making tea out of it. It's okay. pretty nasty, but I think it's delicious. <laughs> it's really bitter, but people you like can, I mean, things. you can do stuff like mix it with carob. And other, yeah. You know, there's, there's companies out there that essentially take stuff like reishi and mix in turmeric and yeah, chai spices like and stuff and make tea out of it. Yeah. And those mixes tend to be very expensive. Yeah. I'm thinking one company in particular, we'll mention them, but you can take this stuff, grow it at home, grind it up and add your own spices. Yeah, that can make a lot of tea. tea. Yeah, tea and coffee alternative kind of things. It's good for your immune system. I don't. I think the, the medicinal benefits of these things is potentially sort of overhyped, but like they definitely, like the things we can say is it does support a healthy immune system because some of these mushroom polysaccharides do get cycled into you know bits and epitopes that like are used by your white blood cells and there's a pretty good amount of science behind that and they also the polysaccharides in these things help 
select for a more diverse selection of bacteria in your gut. And the more diverse bacteria you have, the more diverse your microbiome is. And that is also to help with like inflammation response and allergy type things. So like, I think making some of the medical claims about this stuff is I'm hesitant to do that, but I can very conclusively say that I know this will help support a healthy immune system. And if nothing else, um, it's not gonna hurt you. And if anything, it could really help you. So I think it's pretty cool to play around with this kind of thing, especially when you get to grow it at home. So yeah. that's fun. Um, I mean, speaking of that, you guys, you do have some sort of mushroom supplement stuff, right? You focus yeah. mostly on the yeah. real kids, yeah. but you now have some. Yeah, we do have, we have mushroom stuff. supplements okay. and we have mushroom tinctures. Nice. Yeah. So you guys, you have from, from spawn, you have liquid spawn. Yeah. You have spawn on plates. Yeah. You have slant cultures. Yeah. So there's three different ways you can get like base material to start doing mushroom cultivation. You have these kits where you have, like just high quality shows up fruit mushroom in a couple days and you can like harvest and eat these and you'll get at least two, three, four flushes of mushrooms. Yeah, probably like two or three. Two or three yeah, solid ones. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll can get do like, more. But yeah, I'll get two or three good ones and then the blocks get a little yeah. like one after they've been sitting in a high humidity environment for a while. They get they do get some green stuff yeah. on them. At that point, I'll usually pull the plastic off and throw them in my backyard. Yeah. And if it rains a little bit, you get a few more mushrooms. Totally. It's like, and that those blocks too actually make really good um, compost material. Yeah. So I've broken a bunch down old ones and put mixed them into my garden beds. And I don't necessarily get mushrooms out of my garden beds then, but I'm getting um, a lot of like nitrogen and other stuff yeah. returned to the soil. So that's cool to see. Um, are there, you know, are there any mushrooms that you guys aren't growing right now that you want to? Oh, there's. <laughs> I'm kind of always interested in uh, trialing new trialing things, new things yeah. 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 Um, but it's kind of we're just in the transition too of uh, moving into this new space. Right, yeah. So we'll be where we a, are now. A big yeah. new place you can so really increase the number of kids really you can like sell. Allow and, and us to do even more R and D yeah, experimentation. Kind of yeah. Is there anything? Do you guys have any um, stuff you've locally uh, cultivated? Yeah, like well, yeah, we've done that uh, pretty often. Okay. Uh, we've found like cultured local oysters, okay. local lion's mane. Nice. Um, we did have a local uh, New Hampshire burn morel. Um, so yeah, there's that. We're always like keeping an eye yeah. out. Because you guys things. are just a mushroom company. You're like a bunch of mushroom yeah, nerds. Yeah. You guys go up for hikes, and you know, I we got a, a really cool chance to go to an island yeah, yesterday yeah, and do some yeah. exploring. That was and, really fun. Um, it's just it's it's interesting to come to a company where there's a bunch of people who are as interested in mushrooms as kind of I am, and you guys have like figured out a way to you know supply people with mushrooms and get them hopefully excited too. So it's one of the things I love about North Spurs. You're actually doing education yeah, as well yeah. as you know supplying the stuff that people want. Um, so that's that's yeah. Cool we're, we're so happy to have you come. To <laughs> it's awesome to like yeah. to get to hang out with you and talk about mushrooms and go look for them in the woods. Yeah, yeah it's fun. I mean, I, I have a great time with it. And I've, I've grown a lot of your North Spore kits over the years, and I've always been impressed by, like, you know, what, what comes out of them, basically, yeah. right? I've always gotten mushrooms. They're always good mushrooms. Um, it's really fun to play around with all the different varieties, because, yeah, like, these are three oyster mushrooms. They're all fundamentally yeah. pretty similar, but they have marginally different textures yeah. and flavors, and they, like, they look different. You know, there's a pink one, and a, there's a yellow one here, too, that you guys yeah. have, I know, yeah. know for sure, so... Um, and it's, it's, it's great to see sort of this new facility that you're moving into yeah. and kind of like the, the directions you guys are going. So, uh, I love, love to see that, but, uh, are there like future directions for North Spore? Is there like things you guys want to kind of get into? Not just new mushrooms, but like new ways of educating. Yeah. And, I like, think interacting with the community. Like we'd love to go even deeper into education, mm -hmm. like have, you know, potentially like in-person multi-day mm -hmm. workshops, workshops. Okay. Uh, probably you know continue to build out accessible content that's like online you know that people can just mm -hmm. have free access and, to and you guys are you have an instagram yeah we have an instagram you have a tiktok yeah. Yeah, and you have a, you, YouTube your youtube's channel. pretty big yeah. right so there's definitely a lot of how-to videos and information we have a blog there's a lot yeah. of information on i know my, website. my parents have yeah. um they've watched some of your blog yeah. stuff and the, like last year they set up a whole bunch of wine cap stuff and they were just getting so many wine yeah, caps that was awesome uh so it's it's really you know my parents generally get kind of nerdy and get into whatever i'm into and it's fun to see them like now getting into mushroom cultivation yeah. just because like i did a little bit because yeah. i've got stuff from north sport they got stuff from north sport yeah that's awesome <laughs> it's a lot of fun um, do you, I mean, here's a question I get asked yeah. a lot, and I struggle with answering this question because 
my answer is like a 45 minute podcast, yeah. but do you have a favorite mushroom? My answer is probably not 45 minutes, okay. but you're like more sophisticated than me. Well, I just, I, just, I just can't choose one. That's yeah. my problem. I have I, so many yeah. favorites, you know. It changes for me too, but I, I really like... Uh, like king trumpets, king tree, yeah. uh, for a because they're just mushroom. so meaty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those are really order. good, like uh, a meat substitute. I like log drum shiitake are delicious mm. too. I mean, as opposed to ones grown on sawdust. Yeah, like I think they're even. The yeah, I okay. think they're even. I mean, sawdust grown shiitake are pretty it's good, good too. too yeah. But I think the log grown okay. are like. Is that you guys get some like oak logs? You drill the holes yeah, and take the yeah. plug spawn and put it in. Yeah. And that was that normally it takes like a year or two to like yeah, it takes it about takes a, a while. year. Okay. Usually. So you have to let it mycelate yeah. and keep them wet and yeah. then do you ever do the the shocking the logs? If it was shiitake, you can come by with a hammer and like whack them and that's supposed to like we simulate the logs. Really I mean we definitely soak so um, okay. the forest fruit them, okay. but I mean, haven't really played around with shock team. But I I've, I've heard that's, that's to one try thing. for sure. Yeah. We actually had uh, a friend an employee here who did a research project on electrical current mm. and fruiting okay. to see if he could kind oh, of could, like, yeah, induce more yeah, fruiting through, yeah, through I, There's, current, there's a yeah. really cool experiment that was done in Japan, um, and you, you probably know about it, but it was done with Matsutake, the, um, the, what they call the pine mushroom. But, yeah. uh, they've been seeing declining Matsutake harvest for many years now, and it's, I think it's a function of like habitat loss because there's this invasive pine beetle that is like wrecking habit, havoc on the, the local pine species. But what they've noticed, at least colloquially, was that when there was a lightning strike, they'd get more matsutake. Yeah. So they did this incredible experiment where they were around something like 12 plots, and they were built a simulated lightning machine that they oh, wheeled out of the woods and were doing simulated lightning strikes on plots. And so there's plots that had lightning strikes and plots that had no lightning yeah. strikes. And they compared the number and the size of the fruiting bodies in like the struck plots versus the unstruck plots, and basically said that if you had electrical charge current go into the ground, you get bigger and more Matsutake. Which yeah, is that's fascinating. pretty cool, because somehow this like white amorphous stuff can sense gravity and light, and can sense electricity, and can make a decision to make a bigger mushroom because there was some electricity run through it. Did you guys see anything as a result of that experiment, or is that just sort of just the Matsutake I don't thing? Think it um, I think it was maybe slightly like okay. I mean it's so hard because there's so many you know right, it's, so it's, many it's in the same fruiting room so mm -hmm. moisture content is uh, was he running a constant charge or was it like one big it shock? was no it was a constant it was a constant yeah, okay. yeah. interesting um, that's pretty but cool it wasn't though, it wasn't maybe. like the, I think that yeah it wasn't the same that, but, yeah I think there was a little but it uh, you know it's hard to. <laughs> To tell when it's a, yeah, I mean, it's, science is a complicated yeah, thing, yeah. and like honestly, you can do an experiment once. That doesn't mean that you've got an answer. Yeah. It means maybe you saw something interesting, but if you yeah. repeated the exact yeah. same thing again, if you don't see it again, yeah. you can't necessarily say it's real. We, and you usually need to repeat yeah. something like X number exactly. of times to say that yeah. there's statistical confidence yeah, totally. that this is a real it effect. It wasn't so like replicated that mm -hmm. many times, and also he did find. Uh, an improvement, but I mean, my kind of like outside of the scientific thinking on the functional thinking, mm -hmm. it was not significant enough that I necessarily was like, well, it would be worth doing this to a like grow room right, and the right. labor right. and did, resources every needed single to block every block, like, like hooked up with current, and, you know. <laughs> That's pretty wild. So I've seen one thing, um, at least with king trumpet mushrooms and some of the mushroom farms I've been to. I see a lot of them have um, kind of blue lights or UV lights yeah, around. Yeah. Do you know anything about that kind of like light and exposure? I don't know that much, but, but I think that was, oh, with uh, Hen of the Woods um, mm, yeah, and that. some King Trump. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, and then the, the, yeah King I think the ultraviolet lights yeah. can definitely help yeah. with fruiting. And again, that's mushrooms sense light, and I think part of the idea is that like if this were, um, this block was the inside of a log, this mushroom is trying to grow towards light because it's trying to get out of the log. So yeah. if you provide light, the mushroom will grow towards it. This one, you know, if the bag was oriented sideways, the mushrooms would be oriented sideways, but it's been like this, so they're oriented like this because yeah. they can sense gravity. But the kind of cool thing is if you started getting a couple of pins and then you shifted yeah. the block, you'd see the mushrooms change their orientation yeah, totally. to like want to drop spores yeah. wherever down is. So yeah. that's, you know, it's amazing it can sense light and gravity yeah. in that way. It is. It's and even the 
those uh, pink oysters mm -hmm. are you know pretty vibrant. Um, if those are grown in a lower light environment, mm. they tend to not be oh, not as, as pink. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so I mean they're producing pigments as a function of the amount yeah. of UV light or yeah. exposure that they're getting, uh, which is why it's usually a good idea if you're going to be fruity mushrooms to like have a source of light. Unless, of course, you want to do something like enoki mushrooms, which is the complete opposite where you actually grow your mushrooms in really high CO2, low oxygen, and no light. And that way the mushrooms still think that they're inside of the tree, and so they keep, re they say skinny, and they keep reaching up, and yeah. you get these long, skinny, tiny white mushrooms, but the, you know, the wild version of the same mushroom is orange and yeah, hairy, and yeah. it looks totally different because it's fruiting in a very different environment. And that's just so cool that you can like see such changes depending on uh, the conditions that you're growing stuff in. Um, actually, speaking of which, it's a good uh, lead in to ask you about mycomaterials. So there's, there's a whole like growing industry of people that are making what they call mycomaterials, but they're essentially using usually Ganoderma. Yeah. And they'll take, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different versions of this, but probably the simplest thing would be like, take a mold of, um, let's say like a, a bottle, and you pack it full of uh, sawdust, and then you inoculate with Ganoderma. The mycelium, you know, fills out this mold of a bottle, and then you can heat treat it and turn it into like packing material. So you have sustainable, like mushroom-based packing material. And the, the mycelium, I don't know if you guys can hear this, this is pretty solid. You know, it's a it's a very solid block of stuff, and so that's a really cool way to like make sustainable uh, materials. But like the way that you manipulate Ganoderma, depending on the growth conditions, you can do all sorts of yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, we we uh, supply spawn to some different companies making uh, biomaterials like materials. that. We actually have, and we've also supported some R and D projects and universities doing that. We actually have. Cool. Uh, in the other room, we have a plate that somebody made with oh, our okay. spawn. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I saw it was yeah. a big, yeah. wide yeah. plate. Yeah, yeah. Kind cool. of like a serving plate. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have some friends in Maine that are working on kind of plastic-free mm. aquaculture gear, um, including mycelial buoys. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Work yeah. With so them. like buoys for like lobster buoys. Yeah, but yeah. and that? oyster Oy okay. culture. Um, okay. But instead, you know, eventually foam breaks down in the ocean. Yeah, and yeah. So, well, and that's a huge yeah. source of like plastic foam yeah. contamination in the ocean. Microplastics is all the buoys and the fishing equipment yeah. that ends up getting tossed around by storms. If you had something that was, you know, a buoy made of Ganoderma and it gets washed into the ocean, who cares? It's yeah. going to biodegrade. Fish can eat it. It's not toxic to anything. It'll just, you know, disappear. Exactly. Um, and that's something I'd be really excited about getting more into and, yeah. you know, supporting that industry and kind of removing plastics from the ocean and using uh, mycelium for flotation and other, uh, you know, fishing gear. That's a hell of a goal. So, I mean, you guys are spanning everything from, like, good edible mushrooms to medicinal things to, like, making, you know, replacements for plastics, you know, all under the, the guise and realm of mushrooms, um, which I think is a, a pretty cool thing that we have so many different avenues that we can we can go down with, with these incredible Yeah, well, mushrooms so. have a lot to offer. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, I think we might sign off for now. Uh, we might come back a little bit later and do some like tour facility kind of thing, but this has been a really awesome conversation. Yeah. Thank you for joining yeah, me. Thank and, you, Gordon. Uh, thanks to Norsplorer for showing me around and having a great trip and all sorts of stuff. Should we share cool. handles? Like, let people <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Norsplorer, follow them. They're, you know, at Norsplorer. They got uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I'm fascinated by fungi. You can find me on, you know, any social media you want to. Um, you guys are here in Portland, Maine. Yep. But you ship nationwide. Yeah, we ship nationwide and um, internationally. And internationally, so they got all sorts of good stuff. They got you know a new facility coming out, so they're going to be having way more of these kits available. I know there's been times when I've tried to go buy a kit, and you guys were a little low on inventory, yeah. but that's going to get fixed up. You have these big five and a half pound kits yep. now too, yep. so you get a really significant like amount of mushrooms out of all these things. Um, quite a selection of different things, and you got you got cool stuff. It's like. Said you sell king trumpets now. Yeah, you can buy these reishi kits. You have a few sort of non-standard mushrooms. You certainly won't see in a grocery store. Yeah, totally. um, and we have a lot more uh, growing supplies and growing tools too. So we have a lot more growing yeah. tools. And you, I mean, you guys have a blog. And yeah, you have a, there's a lot of educational. Yeah. And content. our videos are all linked to our website. Our website's northspore.com. Yeah, so definitely check them out. 
Um, I get a discount code for Norspore. It's Fasten by Fungi in all caps if you want to save a little bit of money, order some stuff. Um, you guys also sell that really cool foraging knife you see me using in all my videos. So, I don't know. It's just, just awesome to be here and uh, I will... I like you and Owen are like the most decked out forager I've ever <laughs> seen. It was fun foraging with you. You got the ultraviolet flashlight, special lenses. Yep, all the things. Hey, you know, you got to be mushroom pro. Potassium. <laughs> Show it off. Well, I mean, anyone can get that stuff, and yeah. you know, you guys sell most of the things that that I would I would bring out to the woods with me, man. So uh, you know, check out their website. You can get outfitted like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna sign off here, guys. It's been fun. Uh, take it easy. I will bid you adieu.